Nigeria's inflation rate has declined to 33.40% in July, down from 34.19% in June 2024. This marks the first decline since December 2022, when it last dropped to 21.34%, according to data released by the National Bureau of Statistics. The figure is 0.8 percent points lower than 34.19 percent recorded in June. On a year-on-year -year basis, the headline inflation rate in July 2024 was 9.32 percent higher than the rate recorded in July 2023 at 24.08 percent on a month-on-month -month basis. The headline inflation rate in July 2024 was 2.28 percent, which was 0.03 percent lower than the rate recorded in June 2024 at 2.31 percent. Between January and June, headline inflation has risen, surging from 29.90 percent in January to 34.19 percent in June, representing an increase of 16.72 percent. On a month-on-month -month basis, the food inflation rate in July was 2.49%, which was a 0.08% decrease compared to the rate recorded in June 2024 at 2.55%. The fall in food inflation on a month-on-month -month basis was caused by a decrease in the average prices of food stock, among others. On this episode of the program, our guests shall be discussing the inflation figure for July as released by the National Bureau of Statistics. Welcome to another episode of Nigeria Today. I am Ikeria Clinton, and thanks for joining us. Now joining us to discuss the inflation figure for July 2024 is Ade Folami, or Lami Lekon, is a political economist and a development researcher. You're welcome to Nigeria Today. Thanks for having me. And also uh, with us in the studio to, uh, for the conversation is um, Yusho Aliyu. He's an economist and a public affairs analyst. You're welcome to Nigeria today. Uh, thank you very much. Gentlemen, you know, it's always a pleasure having you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So uh, I will start with you, uh, Olami Lika. Mm. Now the NBS has released the inflation figures for July. Mm. What are the major takeaways? Very interesting and uh, very dissective in the sense that mm -hmm. Nigerians need to do that. Mm -hmm. And for the benefit of many Nigerians to understand what has really happened, mm -hmm. is to understand it from the perspective that the rate is what has decreased. Mm -hmm. The real fact, the reality that is staring us in the face in the market is still there in terms of the high cost of those goods, those services. Mm -hmm. Over 740 of them that uh, NBS investigated by getting the figure that we are going to interrogate this evening, with over 15,000 informants that they sent all across the 704 local government in Nigeria to go and check for the price of goods that include air transport ticket, medical bills, uh, hotel bills, transportation costs, as well as other commodities that made up the 744 items. So the reality is that we have a decrease in the rate, but the real price of goods and services are still very, very high. Although we can look at it from the point of the Nigerian state is trying as much as possible to bring out official document for Nigerians to work with mm. in a way that can be more formal and more official. Mm. Now, uh, you shall, uh, the, the figure is 0.8% uh, point lower than that of, um, that of June, mm. which, is, um, which was 34.19%. Uh, How significant is this decrease? June was half year report. July is second year report. In between, there, um, there were a lot of uh, measures taken, mm. and there were a lot of issues that are also uh, converging to bring 0 0.8. Mm. But 0 0.8 is still significant, and that is what we have been calling for, mm. at least to, to see inflation at a halt, and to see inflation declining. By declining, like what uh, Adefolarin explain exactly these are statistical figures that we need to understand the life of the economy and you understand the life of the economy using aggregate functions like you rightly pointed out 
the aggregate functions that made up this data are common. They are commonly used in all economies. And I have to also salute the Bureau of Statistics. I'm always interested in what the Bureau of Statistics is doing for one reason, that at, at all costs, they are giving us information about our economy, information about our policy measures, information about the situation of Nigerians. And at the same time also, the Bureau of Statistics has remained consistent and we have been using the data. So we have to commend them for even uh, 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 dislodging resource persons on, in the fields and then bringing out information and then analyzing them in a good time. This is a good uh, aspect of discharging of responsibility. However, uh, inflation, inflation reduces purchasing power of individuals. So if you are to measure what, how can you understand prosperity in terms of reduction of inflation? You understand prosperity in terms of additional bundles of good consumed by each household. And that household must have what is called effective demand. Remember, the same period under survey was crippled by end bad governance protests. So definitely, activities in the market will be halted at a certain level. Distribution of goods and services will also be halted. Do you understand? But remember, the July outcome, which is very significant, does not reflect August activities because the protest was August 1st the sensitization for August 1st was in June. So definitely uh, uh, it is good that Nigerians now understand that inflation is dropping. And it is quite significant to understand. Let me tell you what transpired on 31st of July. On 31st of July, I was blocked at Obolafo doing uh, a young festival. And that young festival is a significant factor that bring what was in the farm to the market. Do you understand? So, yes. Uh, uh, Isha, I'll have to stop you here <laughs> so that um, uh, you give us uh, some of those stories uh, back. Uh, yeah. Mm. As much as we talk about uh, the, pro uh, the, 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 the protest, we still uh, wouldn't really want that yeah. to repeat I itself. Exactly. Yeah. It has gone yeah. and let it just be. But let's just say, yeah. let's forget about it like a bad <laughs> Yeah, a bad it's, it's not welcome. We, you know, it's, it's not welcome. Not welcome. Mm. Now, now uh, back to your uh, Olami Lekan. Mm. Uh, as much as you say these are statistical uh, figures that have been released but the reality on the ground. However, these are some of the uh, figures we look out for. Mm. We, you know, uh, experts tend to exactly. use to uh, determine mm. or to analyze mm. events mm. and um, you know the economy. So, uh, would you say that with this decline, this is beaming kind of a green light mm. on the you know the economy? I think this should go back to us trying as much as possible to appreciate the effort of the government in the last 13 months particularly the monetary policy of the CBN, very hawkish, but they were very strategic. And I can say for free that those policies really have a weight on the reduction of the, or decline of the current uh, inflation that we are recording. Mm -hmm. And again, let's not forget the various intervention of the federal government through the fiscal policy. A lot of stimulus have gone into the economy in recent time, particularly with over 200 billion from the Bank of Industry, market money that was given initially before now, the student loan and several other stimulus that are coming. So if you look at it from the angle of the government intervention in the economy, we can say for fact that we have a policy that is trying as much as we to reduce inflation in the system. But we still call for more effort from the government, particularly in the areas to tackle the cost of transportation, majorly. And I remember when MPR, MPC, which was out. Ishao, I know most of we discussed this yeah. on, on different uh, media stations. And uh, CBN was like, one of the things they are having challenge with is they want to bring down deflation, but there is no collaborative effort from the physical policy side. 
So, and they mentioned some of the challenges they are being confronted because from the fiscal policy side, the intervention that is supposed to address infrastructure is not yet there. The intervention that is supposed to help Nigerian people to understand how the sector, particularly in the food area, can be can be well addressed is not yet there. So, CBN made mention of their frustration through their first, uh, monetary policy that fiscal policy is not collaborating. But we just hope that going forward, things will be done in a way that all these policies of the government will have a meeting point and a balance of policies. You get it. And for for example, the imbalances that we are suffering from our fiscal policy mm -hmm. as a result of lack of balance between fiscal policy and the monetary policy. Mm -hmm. And that alone is not helping the aggressive or the hawkish policy of the CBN to address inflation as expected. But we see have a, we, we, we believe that going forward we can have a better means and a better mechanism to reduce inflation below what we have just seen this in the month of July. Okay, now uh, you shall uh, uh, earlier on you, you talked about uh, the purchasing power, yeah. you know, as per you know the inflation affected. Now I, I want you to uh, explain to us how does it decrease, or how can this decrease in you know affect the average consumer? Because in all of this, we're talking about figures. The man on the street want to know how can this figure affect me, affect my purchasing power. How can I get food on the table? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that is what we're talking about. How do I get food on the table? Uh, that is How does that, it reflect? That, that is what we have been uh, uh, advocating, that uh, there should be a deliberate attempt in mm -hmm. policy adjustment and introduction of new policies. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Olami Lukong pointed out directly mm -hmm. the, the effort of the government. You remember, even the central bank, I don't look at monetary policy assisting because I look at food inflation. Mm -hmm. And at the, my argument all the time is that, of course, it is true man on the street mm. want to have food on his table. But if you don't have income, mm. you don't have purchasing power. Exactly. Mm -hmm. if you, uh, it, what we are speaking all the time is effective demand. That is the theory. But one thing that I always... Uh, to be more optimistic, I commend the central bank because it was all the distribution of free fertilizer that was done by CBN mm -hmm. to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. I have followed it mm -hmm. and it has gone to the farmers. So if a fertilizer comes directly to a, to a farmer, mm -hmm. meaning that some of his savings that ought to have been used to buy that fertilizer mm -hmm. will improve his consumption power in the market but however income those on fixed income are always different from those with flexible income mm -hmm. if you are trying to bring what hicksian are trying to identify using indifference curve analysis mm -hmm. analyzing mm -hmm. what consumers consume at a level of income mm -hmm. and at the price in the market prices are already high mm -hmm. in income depreciated mm -hmm. And at the same time, also, those on fixed income are yet to, uh, to receive any adjustment. So, thereon is that if inflation is reduced, probably it's a result of there is no much struggle to buy goods in the market. Mm -hmm. And notwithstanding, too, also, intervention of the government, free food will reduce the rate at which people go to market to buy that food. Mm -hmm. Prices will go down. Mm -hmm. Uh, intervention, like I said, you give a farmer fertilizer and the income is now is with him, then he can go to market and life will improve a little bit. Mm -hmm. But what is more important presently is that we look at the waivers given by, the, by Mr. President for 150 days. Mm -hmm. These are things that in the long run, in, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, in the short run, mm -hmm. if efficiency is attached to it, inflation will be coming down because a lot of processing industries will have their input either directly or indirectly within this economy or outside at a lower purchase rate. That is a fiscal uh, policy. Uh, policy which is helping those who are producing to have certain level of capacity improved in their production capacity. But ultimately, there we must appreciate 0.8% decrease in inflation mm -hmm. so long as we will, we will not be comfortable with additional figure mm -hmm. on inflation this is my always this is what i always try to to balance when we are explaining what will make economy work mm -hmm. for those 
at the bottom and those at the top. Be, 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 and if you check carefully, those at the top, their consumption is reducing. Mm -hmm. It has reduced, probably because of many measures taken, not only by the mm -hmm. government, mm -hmm. but by the citizens. Exactly. Do you understand? People are more careful to move with 20 vehicles. <laughs> Do you understand? Mm -hmm. People move with one, mm -hmm. so they are, they, their consumption is reducing. You know better than moving. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. So, however, it is, it, is, it, is, it is important that the CBN should not sit and relent. Mm -hmm. The fiscal measures should not sit and relent. Mm -hmm. Mr. President has an option to provide food on the table of a common citizen. Okay. Now, uh, Olami Likon, earlier you said, okay, these are figures, uh, but the reality on ground, how can we make these figures, you know, uh, become, uh, uh, will, I, will I say, transform the reality? Mm. Mm. It's, quite, it's quite simple. It's not a rocket science. Just yes. that uh, we've been shining away. You know, we'll, uh, uh, Elias have made mention of some things that we expect the government to do, particularly bringing food to the table mm -hmm. of people. My concerns have always been the state government. Mm -hmm. The last time I talked about inflation and NTA, I made a call and I said, what are state government doing about inflation? We leave everything for federal government. State government, even though they are not in charge of monetary policy, they are also in charge of fiscal policy in their respective state. The various intervention stimulus that federal government is applying at the federal level, state can also take measures to ensure this happens. I asked a question the other time. I said, how many states ask farm? to the point that we now push federal government to be calling for people to go and import food. And the, uh, my organization, Polyekono Analytics, did a dissected analysis of that particular policy. Although it's a short to medium term intervention, but it has a long term effect on our forex. By the time those guys bring all those products into the country and they want to go back again, they will begin to demand for dollar from CBA. Where would they get the dollar to give them? Meanwhile, there's a policy on ground to allow them to come in, even though we have reduced the, the duty free on them. Now, for me, to reduce inflation, particularly food inflation, which is very, very more dangerous and a threat to the majority of Nigerians, is for us to produce food locally. Let us increase our food production locally. And this is not on the part of federal government alone. State government are shying away from food production. They should not leave it for subsistence farmers, about 40.02 million of them, in their various states to be producing food. State government should also own farms. Instead of distributing land for estate building, houses that were built for cockroaches and lizards at the end of the day, State government for me should take over food production in their respective state. There are over 138 dams across Nigeria. Southwest alone has 39 of, of those dams. What are the usefulness of those dams? There is a report that just came out the day for yesterday that those dams are being obsolete, they are dying, nobody's upgrading, and nobody's working on them. So, what are those states in those respective where those dams are located? What are they doing for? And most of those dams, about 35% of them is made for irrigation farming. About 21% is made for food uh, water storage. So about, it's only about 5% of that that is made for electricity generation. So what are we doing? Uh, these are infrastructure that will help us to produce food and reduce food inflation. Because out of all the 774 items that Nigerian Bureau of Statistics normally mention, we are more careful and more interested in the f aspect of the food commodity food. price. Mm. Nobody cares about air transport. Nobody cares about uh, uh, rail transport. But when it comes to food, we are very careful about it and very interested in that. So that's why to reduce the inflation, where most Nigerians, as issue have said, put food on the table, we must produce food. And to produce food, state government must also take the responsibility of producing food. Let it not just leave it for federal government alone. Yeah, Isha, you, you just mentioned a very important point. You're, talk, you're talking about food. Yeah. <laughs> because yes. if the, all yeah. the attention is uh, on it's food. On food. It's on food. Everybody yes. wants, you know, the food, the, the, the prices of food and, uh, and all of that. Availability. Av availability. <laughs> yes, yes, that yes. is what uh, we uh, basically want. Now, uh, you also mentioned about, you know, uh, the uh, sustaining this uh, the, the decrease. Yeah. Uh, you know. So how can we sustain you know, the decrease uh, of um, I I what measures should be in place to ensure that we sustain the decrease in the inflation because uh, uh, in the long run, just like Olam uh, rightly pointed out, in the long run, if you start reflecting in, you know, in the day-to-day -day, uh, things. We, See, we well, you carry <laughs> One fundamental thing, it's very simple. It's not a rocket science is a multiplier mm -hmm. of these price changes, mm -hmm. cost of PMS. Mm -hmm. Crude production is the immediate 
to produce. We were producing above 2 million. We are producing 1.6, but we are producing this. What is the requirement of our refineries locally? Let us produce PMS at lower prices. That is immediate. That will bring back the lost income by all users mm -hmm. from KK, mm -hmm. cyclists, car owners, mm -hmm. many more. It will reduce. That is one. Second, Mr. President is not alone. State governors are playing. We have to commend Nigerian army hmm. that have started inspecting farms and guarding farm communities so that they can go and harvest and bring food to Nigerians. These are measures. But above all, why youths I always no economy can work without its own productive youths. Hmm. Demographic structure is very good to understand. Ukraine, Mr. President, has an opportunity to put special food emergency committee. This special food emergency committee will not look at state governors. Whatever is given, there are constituencies and what mm. the polling station mm. get 10, 10 youths from all constituencies. Let them converge in their local council. Elect leaders. They should be speaking to Mr. President directly. Mm -hmm. They should be speaking to the chairman that is going to enjoy a lot of facilities. Mm -hmm. Those youths can also speak to their president. So I am advocating that structure. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. If Mr. President is giving rice, he should not hand over to state governors. Mm -hmm. He should hand over to the police station, mm -hmm. to the youth in that center mm -hmm. to distribute. Mm -hmm. The record is there. The, everything is on table, and that will help to bring back confidence mm -hmm. from the youth to all of us mm -hmm. at this level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, <laughs> I know you shall have a very short fight a exactly. lot. Now, in your uh, opinion, you, you mentioned some, a lot of in interventions that the uh, federal government has put in place to mm. ensure that uh, we record the figure. Exactly. We record it mm. now. Now, do you see these, uh, do you see more decrease mm. in the inflation rate mm. in the future? Definitely, we expect that to happen. Yes. Mm. If, if there is steadfastness and sustainability, mechanism mm -hmm. on all of these po uh, policies, mm -hmm. particularly if they won't look at the way of policy some assault, if you don't jettison some of the mechanisms they already put in place to help them to reduce this inflation, mm -hmm. we will have a successful and reduction in, and decline in inflation. But if in the other way around, if there are conditionalities that will make them to reduce those mechanisms, because I've seen that there's a home good mechanism uh, a p policy that the government is introducing, I think it's a home genuine way of trying to reduce inflation and other hardship in the economy. But if the jet is in it as a result of they want to go and collect one loan from any other place, definitely it will fail. But we just hope they can sustain it, they can help it to work, and they can also use their physical responsibility to ensure that this will become something that could last longer. Although there are a lot of fixed year, fixed year that they are doing, but we know that this particular one they have put in place in the last four months has really helped us to see that the figure of inflation is dropping. But one thing I also encourage the government to do is this. Apart from increasing productivity, apart from what Isha have said about, let us see how we can locally produce our crude. One other thing is that how can the government work with the Manufacturer Association of Nigeria so that all this incentive that government is giving them, this Manufacturer Association can also do a benevolent back to Nigerians. Because what we are seeing is that as much as government is giving, there's a 150 billion to be given to Manufacturer Association of Nigeria. By the time that money is given to them, and say, so, okay, you have been given 150 billion, can you re reciprocate to your product pricing mm -hmm. back to Nigerian? Mm -hmm. That could be a challenge. So we will encourage them to do that for Nigeria. Th thank you very much. The reason why I ask that is because, uh, you know, over time, experts have been saying, ah, we see this inflation rate mm -hmm. going higher and higher. Mm -hmm. But uh, hearing this from you, mm -hmm. uh, there's hope. <laughs> there's what serious hope. The law of diminishing <laughs> return. Mm -hmm. But we have to end here. You <laughs> shall. I know you are ready to say, exactly. to say more. But <laughs> this is where we draw the curtain on this, today's episode of Nigeria Today. Very big thank you to my guest, Yusha Waliwi, an economist and a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much thank you. for your time okay. and your contribution. And also I had a, a day for Larry Olamilika, a political economist and development researcher. Thank you for your Thanks time. Thanks for having me.
And thank you for being part of the program. Don't forget, Nigeria Today airs every weekday at 7.30 p.m. on NTE News 24. You can also check out this episode and others on www.youtube.com slash NTE News 24 Hub. Once again, thank you for watching. I am Ikeria Clinton. Have a wonderful weekend. Mm -hmm.